Amen. Amen. Turn in your Bibles this morning to Matthew chapter 17, if you would. And while you're doing so, I just want to, again, express my gratitude to uh, Brother Foster and the Emmanuel Baptist Church for the kindness that you have shown to us through these recent days, through the meals that have been provided, and uh, just for the spirit that we've got to feel here. I really appreciate it. But more importantly, I'm thankful for God's spirit that I feel here this morning. And uh, uh, I appreciate uh, Brother, Brother Foster giving me a chance to preach. He's taking a big risk, you know. <laughs> Letting a man preach that he's never heard. I hope so, my brother. I hope so. I, I'm thankful this morning that uh, I know that I know that I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that I'm saved. I know what God has done for me in my life. Uh, I know that somebody last night had mentioned, uh, they were testifying, a lady, and had mentioned something to the effect of, I think she said that she had used to have been in uh, uh, Old Time Methodist Church. Uh, is, is that person here that had testified that last night? They were talking about the assurance of their salvation that they had uh, since they had started attending a, a Baptist church. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw this out here for y'all. And uh, don't get scared, but I used to pastor in the church of God. And don't, don't be afraid, I'm not going to speak in tongues. I'm not going to preach and lose your salvation. My doctrine was not always right, and probably yours has not always been quite exactly right on everything either from time to time. But I have full assurance this morning. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt what God has done for me. And I'm happy this morning that I'm happy in the Lord, and I know exactly where I'm going. If you have your Bibles in Matthew chapter 17 this morning, we're going to start reading in verse number 14. The Word of God says this, And when uh, they were come to the multitude, they came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. And I hope you got your King James Bible this morning, because a lot of versions don't have this next verse here. It says, Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Matter of fact, I got a little app on my phone, and I looked at it this morning just out of curiosity. There were three or four versions that I looked at, and it just said empty right there where verse number 21 is. I thought, what a shame that that is to leave that verse out. But I'm thankful we've got the entire Word of God this morning right in front of us. If y'all would bow with me for a word of prayer, we'll get to the message God has given me. My Father in heaven, Lord, I want to thank you once again for your presence. Lord, I pray now, God, as your vessel, Lord, that you would use me for thy honor. Lord, let the power of the Holy Ghost that raised Jesus up from the dead, Lord, anoint me and help me to preach this morning. God, your people are thirsty, Lord. God, we live in the midst of a day and age where there is a famine of hearing the words of of the Lord. And so, God, we ask you this morning that you would speak to us. God, I pray don't let us leave this morning the same way that we came. Lord, I pray even right now, God, prepare us. God, prepare me as your vessel this morning. And God, I'll be careful to point all the reverence and all the honor directly back from whence it came and that's back to you Lord God Almighty in the name of Jesus Christ Lord it is in his holy and precious name that I ask these things Amen and Amen, amen. Not too long ago I, I read a story and it's, it, it, it stood out in my mind and it gave me uh, some thoughts of, about putting together this sermon. Matter of fact, I told my parents this morning, I've never preached this sermon. I actually put it together about a month or so ago, and uh, it's more of a, of a, I guess, a sermon that you'd preach in a church rather than uh, at the rescue mission, if you understand what I mean. But, 
But uh, the Lord gave me this message a while back, but I, I was reading a story about a man named Thomas Edward Lawrence. He's probably better known to a lot of people as T.E. Lawrence. And he was born on August the 16th, 1888, in Wales, over in Great Britain. He's popularly known as Lawrence of Arabia. And uh, Lawrence was famous for his exploits uh, working as a British military liaison to the Arab Revolt during the First World War. And uh, during that time, there were all these desert raids that were taking place. And uh, British officer T.E. Lawrence and his Arab rebels, they tied down and stopped a lot of this Ottoman Turkish resistance that had been fighting the British armies there in the Middle East. And Lawrence of Arabia's struggle against the Turks during World War I is a classic of guerrilla warfare. Matter of fact, even yesterday I got online and was reading uh, some of the, the stories there that I found and about how the British uh, implemented guerrilla warfare there and fighting against the Ottoman Turks. But his story became a, a personal account. It became a classic of world literature. Probably many people have seen the movie Lawrence of Arabia and uh, it, it's just a story about all these things that happened to him while he was fighting there in the Middle East but he wrote his Arabian adventures called the Seven Pillars of Wisdom and during the war Lawrence developed some close friendships with many of the sheiks there in Arabia and after the war he brought some of these sheiks with him uh, back to England to show his appreciation for their support against Turkish domination. They had a wonderful visit, they appeared before Parliament and uh, the, the, uh, the Joint House of Commons there in England and even had an audience before the Queen and on the last night of their visit Lawrence uh, uh, Lawrence offered them anything that they wanted to take back with them to their desert homes. He said, I want you to look around. Anything that you see, I'm going to let you take it back with you. Well, they led uh, Lawrence up, up to the hotel room, into the bathroom, and they pointed to these faucets in the bathtub, and they said they wanted to take those faucets back with them to Arabia so that it could provide them with uh, water, running water there in the desert. You see, they didn't realize that these faucets, or as we say down in North Carolina, of these spigots, they didn't realize they were just superficial. Behind them there was plumbing, behind them there was hot water heater, there was an energy source that heated the water, there was a city main that supplied the water, and from the city there went a line to an outside source of water. Uh, uh, they didn't understand that there was no type of magic or no type of power in that faucet itself. And the magic is not in the faucet, it is what is behind the faucet that gives it the water supply. Supply. And you could have a 24 karat gold faucet, but if it's not attached to a water supply, I want to tell you, it's absolutely useless. That thing can do absolutely nothing. The magic is not in the faucet. It is what is behind or what comes from that faucet. And without, uh, without the pump, without the plumbing, without the reservoir, if it ever goes out of service, you know that that thing is absolutely useless and it will not do anything. It is what is behind the faucet that gives it its power. Now I'm going to talk about that this morning and use this analogy to it that there is absolutely nothing in and of ourselves without the power of the Holy Ghost that can do anything. We are nothing but empty faucets without his power working behind of us. And once you lose that source of power, you're just like a spigot that has nothing behind of it. You can turn on the hot and you can turn on the cold all you want, but if everything's not right behind of there, it's not going to work. I'm going to tell you first of all this morning... I want to tell you this, the faucet is necessary to get the water where that it needs to be. I don't want to minimize the importance of a vessel. God needs faucets. He does need us this morning. God has always worked through human vessels. In fact, most of the time, God works through the most unlikely of vessels. Look all through the Word of God and what you'll find is that He uses the most unlikely and the most surprising of people that He uses to be His faucet. You study the word of God and what you'll find is that Moses was nothing but a stutterer. You'll find that little old David, his armor didn't even fit him. You'll find that John Mark was rejected by Paul. You'll find that Timothy had stomach ulcers. You'll find that Amos' only training was that he was a fig tree farmer. You'll find that Jacob was a liar. David had an affair. Solomon was too rich. Abraham was too old. Peter was afraid of death and had a loud mouth to him. Lazarus was, was dead at one 
one point. John was self-righteous. Naomi was a widow. Paul was a murderer. And by the way, also was Moses. Gideon and Thomas both doubted. Miriam was a gossip. Elijah was burned out. Jeremiah, he, he battled depression and even got suicidal. Martha was a worry wart. Samson had long hair. Noah got drunk. Did I not forget to mention this morning that Moses even had a short fuse. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is that God uses the most unlikely of people. And I'm thankful that he doesn't require a job interview. He don't hire and fire like a lot of bosses because he's more of a father to us than he is a boss. He doesn't look for financial gain or loss. He's not prejudiced or partial. He's not judging, grudging, sassy or brassy. He's not any of those things that we expect a normal boss to be this morning. But I will tell you that he comes to us right in our point of need and he uses the most unlikely of vessels. I want to thank God this morning that he's chosen us to be his vessels this morning and he's just looking for somebody to fill up with the Holy Ghost of God that is willing to say, God, I'm willing to let you work in my life. Uh, someone once said I was never of any use uh, till I found out that God did not intend for me to be a great man. There's a whole lot of truth in that. God don't care about you being all that great. Uh, he just intends for you to be willing to be used by Almighty God. God needs us to be faucets this morning. John chapter 7 verse number 38 he said he that believeth on me as the scripture hath said out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. God wants us to be a faucet. God can have all the plumbing in place have the pump hooked up and be ready to pour out blessings on his people on the world but he needs you and me to be his faucets. In many cases the only thing that stops a move of God is the lack of a vessel. You'll find that back in the story of Elisha. Is this mine, brother? I was going to drink it anyway, even if it wasn't. You'll find back in the Old Testament in 2 Kings chapter number 4, you'll find the, the, the story there of Elisha. And when Elisha was performing the miracle for the prophet's widow and the oil was flowing freely. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse number 6, and it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there's not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Now according to that right there, what is the one thing that stopped the flow of oil? It was the lack of of a vessel. Now don't ask me to explain this morning why God has decided to use imperfect vessels to accomplish his work because I want to tell you something, it doesn't make sense to me that this God who can do all things in and of himself the very God of heaven who can simply speak and bring forth worlds into existence, the one who simply says let there be light and there's light, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why a God who can do all things would choose to restrict himself to moving through these imperfect, flawed, inconsistent uh, forms of humanity. And I don't know why the Creator chooses to move through His creation, but God is always seeking for people through whom which He is able to move. On the day of Pentecost, what we find is that God was filling vessels. Matter of fact, Peter said there that God would pour out His Spirit upon all flesh, he says. All through the Word of God, you'll find that God God is looking for a man to use. Uh, Ezekiel said that God was seeking a man to step in the gap and make up the hedge. When the Lord struck Saul on the road to Damascus, he then told Saul, go and see Ananias, and he will tell you what to do. God used a human vessel. In Acts chapter 8, verse 26, you'll find that it's an angel, the, the uh, angel of the Lord that tells Philip to go on down to Gaza there, and I'm going to introduce you to an Ethiopian eunuch, and it's going to be there. I want you to share the gospel with him. You'll find in Acts chapter 10 verse 3 that Cornelius is sent to a man to hear the word of God. Has it ever occurred to you that God could choose an angel and that God could send an angel to tell us the gospel if he so choose but he doesn't choose to do that because an angel can't fully understand what God has done for mankind. An angel can't tell you what it means to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. An angel can't come by and tell you what it means to once be a sinner and once be blind 
blind, but now I can see. He can't explain those things to you. First Peter chapter 1, verse 12, speaking of the gospel being given unto man, it says, unto whom it was revealed, not that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. You see, they only can look into this thing. They can't fully understand it like you and I can this morning because they have not tasted the good gift of God like we have. God always chooses a man. In the book of Revelation, John says that God wept because he could find no man to open up the book of salvation. So God himself took the form of man to bring redemption. Do you understand this morning just how important you are to the work of God? God will not move without a vessel. God will not pour his spirit without a faucet for it to flow through. And you are that faucet. God needs you and God needs me. As I've already said, God could have easily ordained that angels would do this thing. But instead, he has chosen through the foolishness of preaching to use you and I as his faucets. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about this morning, this is very important, is this. Even though God needs us, we cannot afford to take the glory for what only God can do. Amen. Understand this this morning, that I am a faucet but I must remember that there is no magic in that faucet. Right, yeah. It is what is behind that faucet that counts. Right. If the power supply, help me now Holy Ghost, if the power supply ever gets cut off from behind the wall, the faucet is absolutely useless. If the power supply ever goes out of the water supply, you can't do anything with that. If you've ever been in a situation where your power's gone out, you know what I'm talking about. Or where something happens to your plumbing, you can sit there and turn the hot water and the cold water all that you want. But if that power supply is ever cut off, it is absolutely useless. In other words, what I'm trying to say is this this morning I might still be able to look good and dress the right way and say the right kind of things and I may still appear the same but if the power supply if it's been shut off I'm of no use to God anymore you realize and I was reading it again the other day that whenever Samson was laying his head in the lap of Delilah and they cut off his hair in the middle of the night when he woke up it's one of the scariest verses in the whole word of God that Samson got up and he did didn't even know that the Holy Ghost had left him. What a sad shape that there's churches throughout the United States of America. Probably this morning I would dare say and there's pastors standing up behind the pulpit and the Holy Ghost is nowhere near them and they don't even realize it. God help us that we get in the position where we realize we can do absolutely nothing without God's power working in our lives. You know there's a whole lot of talk about people saying, quoting uh, quoting John the Baptist there in both Matthew 3 and also Luke chapter 3 he said he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire we like to talk a lot about the Holy Ghost but where's the fire God help us that we get the fire of the Holy Ghost in our lives so it'll be in our churches it's got to start at home if it doesn't start at home don't you wait till you get to church and you think all of a sudden something magical is going to happen to you and God fill you up. You got to get that thing in your prayer closet at home long before you come to church. I'm a faucet but I must remember there's absolutely no magic in the faucet. Romans chapter 7 verse 18 Paul says for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good I find not. I must understand that I'm only the vessel. I'm only the conduit. I'm only the faucet. That's all that I am. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Paul again says, But we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. The power is God's and I am nothing but an earthen vessel. I'm nothing but an old clay pot. And let me tell you, clay pots can get cracked pretty easy. But I'm going to tell you this morning, that's all that we are in the hands of the potter. And he takes us and forms us into what he wants us to be. But you need to understand this morning that I can't sing well enough. I can't preach well enough to duplicate what 
what only God himself can do. Romans chapter 12 verse 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. No matter how much that God moves through us or through me or through you, you must remember that it is God and not us. No matter how much anointed preaching and teaching comes uh, comes forth from us, we must never forget but what is behind the faucet that makes all of the difference. No matter how many good things happen through me, I'm only the faucet. I, and there's a power supply behind me. If it is ever cut off, I am absolutely useless. Any time that I stand up before a pulpit and I just like I prayed this morning with Bob in my room, I said, God, fill me up with the Holy Ghost. I don't want to dare ever stand up and try to preach the Word of God as an empty vessel. It's a scary thing when you open up God's Word and you claim to be a man of God and you try to do so when there's no power behind of your preaching. I've tried it before and I will tell you it's a scary place to be in. In our text this morning, Jesus is telling His disciples a very important lesson. They most likely had watched him cast out devils many, many times. They had heard him teach about the strong man. There had probably been many of them, several of them at the very least, who had seen him cast that legion of demons into that herd of swine when they came out of the lunatic of the Gadarenes there. They had seen all these things. Numerous times the Word of God speaks about Jesus casting out devils. They had seen all this. And it's probable that the disciples were witnesses to just about every one of these events. So now, they come across a situation that they feel very confidently that they can handle. Matter of fact, they didn't bother to go get Jesus. They tried to do it on their own. And they try to do this. They try to replicate something that only God can do. They've watched Jesus do this. They'd observed his hand motions. They'd probably observed the words that he spoke when he cast these demons out of people. They listened to what he said. They listened to how he said it. They had the words. They had the actions. They had the motions. They had everything else down pat. There was one thing that was missing. They had no power. There's nothing behind that faucet and they failed absolutely miserably at the task at hand. Jesus took this opportunity to explain to them that there was no magic in the faucet itself. In other words, if there's no prayer and there's no fasting, there will be no power. There is no magic in, in, in the faucet. It is what is behind the faucet that makes the difference. You see this morning, ladies and gentlemen, I can say all the right words. I can do all the right hand motions. I can even use that tone of voice. I can do that at the end of my sentences. I can have all those things practiced and worked down. But listen to me this morning. If I haven't prayed and I haven't fasted and I haven't gotten myself in the right position with God Almighty, there will be no power coming from this old faucet. This kind cometh out only by prayer and fasting. The danger that we face as Christians is when we try to duplicate through mere human efforts what only God himself can do because we sometimes get in church so often that we know what to say. We know how to talk. We know when to have a chord change in our singing and we try to duplicate those things that only God himself can do and we get ourselves in a dangerous position and preachers get into trouble when they learn how to preach. Singers get into trouble when they learn how to sing. Teachers get into trouble when they learn how to teach. We must never reach the point where we learn how to do what only God himself can do. I'm never going to be smart enough that I don't need God. I'm never going to be able to preach good enough where I don't need God. I'm never going to be able to sing well enough where I don't need the power of the Holy Ghost in every single thing that I do. I'm never going to get there. God help me if I do. God help you if you do. In the year 1847 there was a doctor from Edinburgh 
Scotland by the name of Sir James Simpson. He discovered that chloroform could be used as an anesthetic to render people insensible to the pain of surgery. From his early experiments, Dr. Simpson made it possible for people to go through the most dangerous of operations without fear of pain and suffering. Some people even claim that his was the most significant of discoveries of modern medicine. Some years later, while lecturing at the University of Edinburgh, Dr. Simpson was asked by one of his students, what do you consider to be the most valuable discovery of your lifetime? To the surprise of his students who had expected him to refer to chloroform, Dr. Simpson replied, my most valuable discovery was when I discovered myself a sinner and that Jesus Christ was my Savior. I want to tell you this morning, I hope that you've made that discovery. That is the most important thing in your life that you can discover. But I also want to take the opportunity and tell you a discovery that I can make this morning. That no matter how smart I am, no matter how well that I can preach, no matter how well that I can organize, I'm still just nothing but a sinner that's been saved by grace. There's no power in me. I'm just the faucet. I'm the conduit. I'm the vessel through which God and His power moves. There is no magic in the faucet. I want to tell you this morning, I need Jesus. I need him more than I did yesterday. Our churches are desperate and dry for a true move of the Holy Ghost of God. And the only way that we're going to get there is when we begin to desire God's anointing power and God's presence in our lives more than our very necessary food. And I know I'm a good Baptist. I like to eat like the rest of us. You can tell from looking at me. But I will tell you also this morning, I hope for the power of God in my life like I've never ever experienced it in my life. I'm desperate for God to move in my life because I've been there when I learned how to stand behind the pulpit and say the right words and do the right things and the power of the Holy Ghost was not in me. And I will tell you that's a scary place to be. God help us. God help us that we never get there. Jesus reminds and rebukes his disciples it was your unbelief it was your unbelief you have not because you ask not why don't we see the power of God manifested in our lives how often do we ask him how often how often do we really desperately say Lord I need your power in my life I need it I'm desperate for it It was their unbelief that hindered them. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, a verse we all know. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. James chapter 1 verse 6 and 7, But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and toss. For let not that man think that he will receive anything of the Lord. Romans chapter 14, verse number 23, the latter part of that verse there says, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Folks, we get in a dangerous place when we forget to ask God in faith to work in our lives. I'm thankful this morning that I know what God can do. I've seen Him work. I'm going to tell you, He is a Savior. He is a redeemer. He is a healer. He is a protector. He is a provider. He is a restorer of broken lives. He is a shield. He's the glory and the lifter up of my head. And I will tell you, I know what God is to me. And I know what God has done in my life. And I'm thankful that even though sometimes we'll see the righteous weep, we'll see the righteous suffer, we'll see the righteous struggle, we may even see the righteous stumble. But I'll tell you one thing we ain't never going to see. We're never going to see the righteous forsaken 
shaking or God's seed begging for bread when we get in the position where we say Lord God I'm just a faucet and I want you to work in my life God has said I finally found a vessel I'm willing to use I want to ask you this morning are you where you need to be with God are you full of his anointing power in your life especially every one of us that call ourselves preachers because we get in a desperate place when we forget that fact God help us to always remember we are absolutely nothing without the power supply being plugged into us I hope this morning you know what I'm talking about first of all you got to be saved before you can even understand what I'm talking about because until you're saved God's spirit cannot indwell you he cannot fill you I am desperate for a move of God I believe personally and I know there's a great falling away that's going to take place and is taking place and I know that we see from the word of God that things are getting worse but I'm going to tell you it don't have to get worse in our churches I believe in him in the midst of these last days God is looking for a people matter of fact he said in the book of Joel of course Peter quotes it in the last days I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh we're in the last days folks God is looking for a people who are going to hunger and thirst for his power to work in their lives and in their churches I hope you plugged in this morning to the power source and if not you don't walk out those doors this morning until you get plugged in Father God I want to thank you for your spirit that I feel here this morning Lord help us to never forget from whence we came and God help us to never get so reliant on our own skills Lord that we try to do this thing on our own that's a scary place to be in Lord as your vessel this morning as your faucet I pray fill me up afresh oh God Lord work in my life work in the lives of every single member of this church and God we love you and we're desperate to see you move in these last days Lord that your kingdom would be glorified Lord God we ask these things now in the name of Jesus and for his sake Amen. 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 You may be here today. So I'm not a preacher. I'm not a singer. So I don't need what he just taught. If you're saved, you need the Holy Spirit.